you've heard of WannaCry, WannaCryptor, WannaCrypt. This is the newest stream of ransomware that is attacking not just business networks, but the entire world. We're seeing a uh, huge infestation of this malware, and uh, it is, it's unprecedented. It's never, as far as I know, nothing quite of this scale mm -hmm. has ever happened before. Um, so it's being deemed potentially cyber warfare. It's being called all these kinds of things that, you mm. know, we're not really sure what is this right now. Is it just ransomware by some lucky hacker who decided to make some money mm -hmm. and is doing a fair job at that? Just a bit scary. I don't know, but we've got some industry professionals here with us tonight uh, in order to talk about that. Uh, Mark Skilton is our first interview tonight. He's a professor of practice in the Information Systems and Management Group at Warwick Business School in Coventry, England. And he researches cybersecurity. He's the author of Building Digital Ecosystems. And he's also got a new book that's just, a, just about to come out. Uh, you can actually go to cat5.tv slash Mark, M-A-R-K, and when you go to that link, you're going to be able to see uh, the books and actually order a copy right off of Amazon as well, so check hmm. that out. Mark, it is so great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Robbie. I'm, uh, I mean, you, you, you have to be on the other side of the moon not to see some of the issues that are coming out with this uh, cyber attack, so thank you very much for having me. Yeah, cheers. And, um, you know, it is, uh, we, we can just get right into our conversation tonight because, as you say, you got to be living under a rock to not know what's going on. And uh, essentially, you know, this is worldwide news. We're speaking with you from Ontario, Canada, and you're in England, and this is a, a real global event. Uh, can you give us a little bit of a backstory on what you've seen as a uh, cybersecurity researcher uh, is, is really happening in, uh, in kind of the, the whole ecosystem of the Internet today? Yeah, that's a good question to ask me because that's the sort of thing I tend to look at. You know, you need to put this in perspective. You know, um, one way to look at it is, well, this is just Microsoft machines that are being affected. So if I'm on iOS from Apple or I'm using an open source system, then this doesn't really matter. It's not that of an issue. But then you hear about 11 million uh, users or PCs being affected and you get lots of different numbers. Um, the way I position this is I, I tend to call this as the third wave the third wave, if you will, of, of cyber attacks. I mean, the first wave I describe in the genesis of, of what I call enterprise scale uh, cyber attacks is really denial of service, D DDoS as it's phrased. Right, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's basically stopping access to your system. Secondly, um, we've got data breaches, much like the famous Sony, Sony attack, which um, with that arguably not particularly terribly good film, but um, clearly was uh, an issue about stealing data and, and mm -hmm. the issue of st st uh, uh, taking money off you. This is really the third way, just to get to the point, which is around ransomware, where it's actually holding you psychologically to ransom for money or to inflict um, emotional damage on you. But equally, you're seeing this now, having attacked hospitals in the UK, right. you know, in Canada, uh, in Russia, has been hit very, very heavily. Uh, it's over about 110 countries. And really, this is a, a smorgasbord, a, a panacea of the ecosystem that we're now living in, with the 24-7, uh, always connected, all these devices. But now, the legacy of, of all these sort of operating systems and whether there's a gap, you know, an air gap. And there's clearly been an exploit here that's been um, been opened up by, by, we believe, criminals, although uh, there has been some new news on that we can talk about as to who's caused this. But it, it just shows the scale of the way we're connected today, doesn't it? And the, mm -hmm. the nature of the threat now is about um, ransomware, unfortunately. And do we suspect that this is a targeted attack or is this, you know, it's so widespread, it seems like this is just like, how has this thing spread so quickly to so many systems? What are we looking at from that perspective? Well, academically, we, we talk about narrative engineering, which is a rather poncy sort of flashy word for what does that mean? But you see this with, uh, with uh, fake news and you hear this in terms of... Uh, information being put out there into the internet to create a, an impact. Now, I think right. what this is, to call it targeted is difficult to say that because effectively it is a exploit on a uh, weakness in the Windows XP system that we read, which is an old version of, of Microsoft's operating system. But that so anybody was, who hasn't... Uh, sorry, Windows XP was cancelled, so, you know, how is this still a problem today? Like, there is no... Well, nobody runs Windows XP anymore, right? Well, obviously not. Is that uh, the two things? You know, the poor National Health Service in the UK clearly got a 
got one here in that they hadn't they've been repeatedly warned not you know to upgrade their systems because the patch Microsoft put a patch out in March this year to fix this and they told yeah. look you've got to upgrade your systems but equally you can talk about um, how we put it um unlicensed software which may be in Russia and elsewhere people using um, you right. know, potentially, um, I don't want to say these illegal versions. So these aren't protected by patches. So this is what's happening. It's a right. complex issue. I hear you. Okay. So what makes and now we're we're all kind of at this point in. Uh, like our viewers and uh, pretty much the world at large, we've all heard of ransomware. So we know that it is, it's an attack, it encrypts your files, it wants you to send Bitcoin uh, to, to basically pay the hackers in order to get your files back. What makes this new attack, this wave of the WannaCry uh, or WannaCrypt ransomware, what makes that so significantly different and why is this now a global event when there have been ransomwares in the past that have gone around? Well, obviously, you know, one of the things that's different this time is that um, another criminal uh, um, group stole some um, software which is called Blue Eternal. There's also some other software which has other unusual names. Now, this software was from the NSA, um, which is reported by the Israeli um, Cybersecurity Agency, I and think, this a couple is of fact? days ago. This is, in f yeah. this is a fact, yeah? Yeah, we believe so. So what we're finding is two, a combination of two things. You've got a, a worm, which is a thing that sort of weaves its way through into your XP vulnerability. But equally, there's been a backdoor method provided by a military-grade um, weapon, cyber weapon, which was stolen from uh, the NSA. And uh, oh. what's happening is the combination is so lethal. This is why it's managed to get through Fire, firewalls managed to break through into all these PCs. Yeah. And so um, the question is, even if you had the patch, um, you, put, you would have been protected. But these computers, because of this additional piece of stolen military grade cybersecurity weaponry, um, it's managed to do so much damage all over the world. It's, it's such a different world that we live in, isn't it, from, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, and this, yeah. is, this was all speculated, you know, this is something that was futuresque, cyber warfare and things like that. Mm. And I wouldn't mind touching on that without getting too far into, you know, it's, it's so easy to fall into conspiracy theories and, and theoretical, uh, you know, like we could just banter here and, and come up with all sorts of ideas of what might be going on. Um, but just backing up a little bit, we keep going back to this, this exploit is from Windows XP. Is it something that's also affecting other users? Well, indirectly, because obviously there's a denial of service here, and also um, you know you you lose patients' uh, medical rec well not lose the records, you lose medical care time, you can't um, go to banks, you can't go and buy stuff. Okay. It's the disruption that creates, you know, Robbie, so and uh, it's that's that part of the the impact of what they're trying to do. But it, it, basically, the, it's a financial gain. They've kind of so they've done a fire, fire, fire store, a um, bit like the famous, um, you know, um, uh, Die Hard 4.0 movie, if you know the one. Um, that's a, it's no joke in that the, this kind of technology, when it can get through, break through the barriers of devices and Internet of Things now with all these things connected, um, the damage it can do is really... Uh, what I particularly like, if I can just sort of raise a sure. point, is the, um, uh, the Microsoft uh, legal counsel, the head of um, legal in Microsoft, wrote a blog a couple of days ago, which I thought was very interesting. And he advocated that we should introduce a thing called the Digital Geneva Convention, the Digital Geneva Convention. And I think that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because I think what's happening is because if the NSA and others, and not just the NSA, you know, you look at the UK government and others, are all sort of stockpiling these side of weapons to protect themselves, but also to be able to do surveillance and do national security right. activities. Um, there's an issue about, you know, if you stockpile <coughs> nuclear weapons, you stockpile cybersecurity um, weapons, they need to have the same level of due diligence. You don't want to leave the door open and you don't want one going missing. You know, this is not a good thing. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good call by Microsoft. What I have an issue with, I don't know what your thoughts are, is that should it be just Microsoft saying they are the first responder? You know, they're a bit like the judge and the jury. Well, it's their system in the first place that got hacked. Yeah. And um, yeah. now they're saying we're going to fix you. But why was it hacked in the first place? You know? Yeah, you so know, like it's not like a, issues here. it's not an automobile where, you know, we got to recall this car because it's our problem, right? Like this is this is much wider mm. scale than that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, this does bring us to the, you know, and it's, it's such a dangerous thing for us to, to get into this conversation because, like I said, we can so easily slip through to conspiracy theories and things like that. But, uh, but it really does, we do get the sense that we're looking at a cyber warfare kind of uh, issue here. 
Um, so the underlying technology being that it comes from these um, government bodies, and now has that been stolen through data theft and, and used by cyber criminals, or what are we, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at that, isn't it? You look at the whole Edward Snowden affair and sure. uh, WikiLeaks and the, the self-appointed, and it depends which particular side of the political divide and the persuasion you have, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have these um, the potential of digital, much like you and I are talking on this um, connection right now. It's a very powerful medium. You know, you're in different parts of the world, but we can connect in instant time. And um, I think the people, the reality that we have to understand, and this is not new, is that the ability to work at the speed of light with these technologies, which is not the physical, it doesn't have the physical constraints that the physical world has, is that you've got situations where people can steal information about you, your identity, they can basically do an inordinate amount of harm within hours or minutes or seconds even. And this sure. is really the issue, you know, with artificial intelligence and being able to automate this. As I said, this is the third wave, uh, Robbie, in terms of the ransomware is a intelligent cyber weapon. It's not a dumb, brutal sort of brick through the window kind right. of thing. This is intelligent. It picks you out. And, it, you know, where this may go is a good debate. It presents itself as something like this. This could be some really smart kids making money off of their hack. It presents itself that way. It reads itself that way. It pops up on your screen and says, your files are encrypted. In order to get those back, send money too. So why would, uh, like, just, this is, you know, to put a theory out there, why would a government use some tactic like that in order to, um, in order, in order to in infiltrate computer systems? And, and essentially, like, looking at the hospitals and looking at um, government and uh, possibly charitable organizations who, don't, who never had the budget to upgrade uh, from Windows XP, for example. So why would these be targets of this widespread attack? Well, it's always the vulnerable that get attacked. I think the two points quickly on this is it's, it's unfortunate the people with the least money or const cash constraints or, um, you know, ironically, the people who may be using illegal versions of this software that get, yeah. get caught out with this. But equally, in terms of going back to the narrative, in that some of these things is about creating obfuscate, no, creating a, a fog, a kind of noise in the market that might be to do to undermine an election, or it might be to undermine certain credibilities, mm -hmm. or in, in most cases with criminal intent, is to steal money or to get intellectual property. No, I'm not pointing fingers towards the Asia, for example, or equally it goes both ways to be, be even handed about this. It is now um, really, we talk about the police. We talk about, uh, sorry, the, the, this is the fourth theatre of war. We talk about land, sea, and air as the three uh, you know, battlefields, if you will, of war. Mm -hmm. It is now the fourth area of war right. is now the, the digital, digital world. And uh, I think we have to realise this reality. There's the thing about Microsoft legal counsel saying we need a, a digital Geneva Convention because this mm -hmm. thing is rapidly getting out of scale, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, and and it is it's it's a changing world right now, in, in that you know we we are no longer dealing with you know your antivirus because we've got mm. viruses that might get into your your boot sector, like that's no longer the mm. the big concern. You know, I sell antivirus, mm. and I, I yeah. you know you need the firewall. You absolutely need the firewall. Don't yeah. opt out of that. Don't turn it off. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was talking to um, uh, another cybersecurity expert friend who's um, very, very a very deep technical expert in this area. And he says one of the critical things to have the wake-up call with the WannaCry issue, which I thought was very interesting, and I put it on my Huffington Post blog, mm -hmm. um, was this issue around um, this type of cyber attack is very sophisticated, that you and I are not technically able to actually fix it. So we just it's a bit like locking the front door with your antivirus, as you say, uh, Robbie. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not sufficient because they got, this is a worm. And then it was using military grade um, sort of backdoor methods in addition to that. So right. like, hang on a minute, you know, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight sort of thing. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's not, it may be laughing at it. But My toy what, lightsaber what, my, didn't work. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work. And, uh, but I think the issue is that there, it's a multi-level response that's needed, point one. And point two is we now need governments, uh, not just Microsoft, but we need experts to deal with this kind of threat because it's now, as I said, gone to the third level, which is you know, machine learning. It's artificially yeah. intelligent. And just the normal patches and fixes isn't going to be enough going forward. And that's I think that's the big wake-up call. Oh, you're, you're scaring me to death here, buddy. <laughs> 
like well, just the thoughts know. of the evolution. <laughs> I wish I could of, tell you better. Yeah, yeah. Now, are there are there folks in the, you know we know about Microsoft's um, proposals and what what's going on there? But what is uh, mm -hmm. what's in place right now to uh, to protect the world at large? Well, there are two things probably in one two is that governments have got their big agencies. So in the UK, for example, you've got the National Cyber Security Agency, which is specialising on monitoring this, this threat. And it's a, and a jump to the uh, GCHQ, the, you know, the, the, the National um, Surveillance Agency in the UK. The similar operations are in the U United States, of course, and Canada sure. and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So we have at the government level now taking far more serious um, attention and investment in that area. But I think the gap that is missing at the moment is is really, you know, to put it bluntly, if we get our pants, we found our pants or knickers were basically between our drawers here. With Microsoft, they, they, they're not updating their software probably, and they put commercials around it. So Windows XP is now a old, old version, so yeah. we don't support it. But that's not really acceptable as a consumer. I've lost my data. I've been attacked. So I think we need to have uh, vendors, particularly having more accountability and responsibility, both sides of the pond in wherever they come from. So yeah. when you're selling a product, this stuff, you've got to look after it. And it's so we need them thing, to though. do more. Like, where, it where does hard. it end? Where does it end for a software developer? Because you look at a car and you buy a car and how long is your warranty for that car? Like, at a certain point, it becomes your responsibility. And when we and cybersecurity researchers like yourself have been saying to folks for years now, upgrade get off of Windows XP, do not continue running that system. You've got that computer that you barely ever use that still has XP on it, never turn it on. Scrap it. Get rid of it. It's not, well, I, it's not really fair to put it on Microsoft, I don't think, as much as you know, we're, we're Linux people here, but it's, it's such a tough thing. There has to be something think, bigger than that. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a really good point you're making here because I think the nature of what you're describing with a car, the analogy of a car, is it's a physical thing. You can touch it. You can say, oh, right, I'm going to put in a new engine or I'm going to basically scrap it. Yeah, and it's the a thing that depreciates. Software can keep yeah, running forever, indefinitely. Uh, exactly, and that's the problem. So I just read that apparently yesterday um, the dear old MPEG-3 format is apparently now yeah. defunct is out and it's no longer supported but that doesn't mean to say it's gone away sure it's still potentially could it's not analogous in this area but the point i'm making is that the digital world exploits both modern systems as well as old systems and i think again there needs to be some accountability i've been saying in the media the last few days that maybe we need a a cyber security police force a bit like um you know the yeah. first responders <laughs> now, who do you call you know not ghostbusters no joke <laughs> you need you, you need to basically take this up with somebody um and I, I don't think there's a clear way forward yet. And I think this is a big wake-up call for everybody. Yeah, and we'll see a lot of changes, I think, over the, the course of the next little while as well. Um, mm. Mark, we really appreciate your time and, uh, and for sharing with us. Uh, do we have any, any inkling as to what's next with WannaCry? Has it kind of tapered <laughs> off through the efforts of, of security uh, researchers and companies? No, um, I, I, I wish I could tell you better. No, this has just accelerated, obviously, the patches for this particular attack, but this is going to be more the norm going forward where we have more um, insidious and psychological um, attacks on our identity and liberty and, and rights. And uh, I think, really, this is just a matter of escalation. I think the concern, particularly, is around weapons, of cyber weapons by governments now need to be under much more um, you know, secure environments because if this yeah. stuff gets out... Um, you know, I can give you a quick analogy with, say, um, in advanced um, biological weapons, just to pick a very uh, serious example. You don't expect those Category 4 or Category 5 uh, labs to basically be open-door institutes. And so I think the problem with digital, of course, is that they're much more vulnerable. So we need to be very careful about this going forward. Sure, and I think it's quite possible that, you know, companies and hospitals and industries need to take this more seriously, to take protection more seriously. It's amazing how, like, DLP solutions and endpoint firewalls that, that prevent data theft and things like that, they've existed for so many years, and they've evolved to the point where they're very, very good, and yet so few have them in place. Yeah, I mean, people just don't follow procedures, point one. I mean, it's just the old adage, you know, how many times do you need to get hacked to basically change your behavior? You know, this is a, this is a wake-up call. But uh, I think what's more concerning is if we're getting military-grade, military-grade cybersecurity weapons out in the open market rather than you know, the dark web, this is not a great development. And I think that's sure. going to be something that for the authorities on both sides of the, 
you know, all over the place are going to be exploiting. So, you know, this is not going to be the last story, I suspect, unfortunately. For sure, for sure. And I, I, I do believe that this is, uh, you know, kind of the start of change for a lot of, a lot of the industry because people, as you say, yeah. it's a wake-up call. People are realizing, yeah. okay, well, we've kept these machines running and we've thought that it was okay and we've ignored the mm. warnings of our IT people. And, uh, you know, now it's time to really step things yeah. up. So we'll sort yeah. of see the evolution over the next little while. Absolutely. I mean, if you've got connected cars, you know, you've got banking, yeah. um, online banking, you've got medical devices, maybe even wearables on your body and stuff, not only your identity and your, your very life could, could depend on these systems working properly in the, in the mm -hmm. new economy. So this is, I think, a, a level of security and uh, surveillance, but also prevention. I think the prevention has been proven in this case is it's not ready yet. And uh, this is going through cycles. They now got this warning, first warning that this is where ransomware can go. And you just, it's amazing that over 110 countries got attacked in this. Yeah. Uh, that's not just one or two. I mean, it's like everybody's going down on this one. And I think what I've said earlier was we do need a much more investment, even you know, in America or Japan or in, in the modern economies, need to be sharing information, need to be responding as a almost like the fourth emergency service across the globe as well as within their own countries because mm -hmm. this is this is a, a, a state of war and not being exaggerating this to, to be alarmist for, for yeah. the viewers that we need to be treating this incredibly seriously, way more than we're you know the level of, that we're doing at the moment. We've got to be very sure and strong in our response because we're sure as hell the criminals are going to be doing the same. Yeah, and it's a, a big wake up call for a lot of folks, including myself, where you know it's it's kind of becoming that way where okay we need to be ready for what's to come and uh, and that's mm. the fact that's un unfortunately yeah. the fact of this world that we're living in right now so uh, we've, yeah. we've been speaking with Mark Skelton Mark thank you so much for your time uh, Mark has a website if you want to check him out learn more about his research check out his books as well it's markskelton.com I've got that uh, linked below uh, and Mark thank you so much for your time Thanks, Robbie. Thank you very much indeed for having me. All the All best. best. Take care.